Simple maths. <laughs> so something I've noticed with working with clients and in one particular client that I've recently dealt with is that when you come from a background of disordered eating and you begin to make progress in your relationship with food, you begin to be more flexible, you begin to be a bit more consistent and a bit more stable because people with disorders eating, it's very up and down. What I've noticed in clients, and this one female in particular who I might just touch on, is that the person makes amazing progress in their relationship with food, but they still tend to overanalyze and focus on the couple mistakes they've made instead of looking at all the amazing progress they've made. And a really good example is the clients I've had. So with one client I have, her name is Savannah. She came to me eating like 1,200 calories a day, you know, heavily restricting herself, binging, um, you know, on weekends. And it's just this crazy like yo-yo, you know, really feeling guilty, then feeling like they've accomplished something, then this and that, then that's okay. So we took her from 1,200 calories and I think we got up to 2,600. Did not gain even a percent of body fat really handled the situation well, got eating a lot of amazing foods, and for six months, really, really consistent, nailing everything, not having relapses, amazing progress, and then she went through a phase, um, I think over two weeks where she had two days where she binged, and that really pulled her apart. You know, the fact that she had binged for two days within a two week period really pulled her apart, and the cogs became almost like they were coming undone. You know, she was she was really starting to think about that previous way and previous lifestyle that she had, well, it's not a lifestyle, but previous way of disordered eating that she had. And, you know, I had to, you know, phone her and say, you know, listen, you've been so consistent for six months. You've eaten hundreds of meals that have been great within those six months. And now you're choosing to focus on two days out of those six months and you're potentially going to fall back into that negative way of thinking and disordered way of eating simply because you had two days out of six months that were bad and i see this all the time that's obviously a very extreme example of someone that is night and day but you see it as old clients where they do well the whole week and then they have like one burger on a Saturday night and they message me on Monday panicking about it, thinking they need extra cardio, thinking that they failed. Guys, <laughs> if you're having five meals a day, seven days a week, that's 35 meals. Is that correct? <laughs> Quick mess. That's 35 meals. If one of those meals, two of those meals aren't perfect, who gives a shit? We look at the course of 10 weeks, that's 350 meals. Guys, if 10 of them aren't fantastic, it's 10 versus 340, because total 350. So you guys can understand that stop over analyzing your mistakes and start to focus on actually what you're doing right. Because some of you are doing so much right, you make one mistake and you choose to focus on that mistake, over analyze it, think that that one meal is gonna kill you, think the one meal is gonna make you fat, I need to do extra cardio, shit I'm a failure, oh my goodness. Guys, stop panicking. <laughs> one meal's not gonna kill you. Just like one salad isn't gonna make you lean. One bad meal isn't gonna make you fat. So choose to focus on all the good you're doing. If you make a mistake, forgive yourself, move on. What use is dwelling and gonna do? What use is being ridden with guilt gonna do? Move on, get up, get back onto your plan and focus on all the good you're doing.